Hello. Today we have someone coming to us from Canby, Oregon, although I know you don't live there, but mm -hmm. we just met Stephen recently. Happy to have you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Louise. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a big listener and I and I, I love the show. So well, we love it. We love that you're here. You're also a Patreon, which mm -hmm. we would like to mm -hmm. say thank and part you of our for doing that. Yeah. Part of our Adoptee Cafe, which leads me to, so you had mentioned about how you came to find us. So yeah. you want to, yeah. Yeah. So I, I thought, you know, I had a, I, I showed up on a friend's podcast about like sports and <laughs> <clears throat> all well and good, but I'm, that's not what, I, what I'm going to do. And um, but I wanted to learn more about like a, what a, what an adoptee podcast would, would look like <clears throat> and started doing some research, listened to adoptees on with Haley. And then I heard you two on her show and I'm like, okay, definitely more of my jam like you guys. <laughs> Aww. And oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, you're the two of yours energy together makes a big difference and it's it's just fun to listen to you guys cracking each other up and w one story that resonated with me that the two of you told is when you were flying down in your ice cream truck down laurel canyon oh yeah <laughs> with no brakes it's good we're alive <clears throat> it it triggered a moment in my head i don't know if you've seen the movie gattaca oh yeah oh gattaca. yeah with ethan hawk he's an yeah. adoptee right like he's yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, right. I mean, it wasn't triggering back then, Louise. It's, it's, That's it's, why. You know. <laughs> right. For for us either. We didn't even mm. Right. Yeah. Watch it again or don't. I don't know. At your, at your own <laughs> peril. But you know, it was like going down this canyon and flying down and like you were together, but you weren't worried. And like he would swim out to the ocean and not worry because in the, the end of the story was I didn't leave anything to swim back. Mm -hmm. mm. That's adoptee jam right there. That is adoptee jam. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Here And my, here we are. My takeaway from that day was a very sore leg. <laughs> and always get your brakes checked. Yes. <laughs> you know. We were lucky everything. to be alive. We were pretty calm. I have to say we went through. That wasn't the only crazy thing we went through. We could be pretty calm. We'd be like holding steady. Yeah. It's so crazy. That now that I'm thinking about it, that wasn't the the first time that no, my brakes went out on Laurel Canyon when I with a friend of mine in the car and I pretended that it wasn't happening. It came an inch cut anyway. Same <laughs> route. So I'm I think thinking we about talked that. about it before it happened that day. Yeah, I think we so, probably did. So back to what Stephen's if, story, right? right? <laughs> wouldn't it be crazy if dot dot dot? Yeah, but well, that's yes. a good story. Well, tell us, tell us how you want to tell your story. From we kind of know a little bit, very very little, just from two minutes of talking. So, sure, you thank you. Um, mm -hmm. so adoptee post post baby scoop, nineteen seventy four, post mm -hmm. Roe v Wade, um, private adoption, then yes. private as in as in not through an agency and through mm. a specific doctor. Oh, uh, a doctor? Yeah. And, really uh, private. Yeah. Like it seems like a com <laughs> conflict of interest. I'm <clears throat> oh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> um, he, his, his primary nurse was my adoptive mom's twin sister. Wait. Okay. Nice. All right. Stick with me. I know it's going to get, it's going to get spicy. So she had just had her first daughter. And he said, isn't this great? You're, you know, and he's, she said, yeah, but my twin sister is not, not bringing it home with, you know, she's been married longer than me and they, they can't have kids. He goes, you want, he's like, I can broker this. I can, he's like, you want, you want a kid? I can get by two o'clock. It wasn't by two o'clock, but it was 22 days. <clears throat> and so that is my, my. So he, he was doing yeah. this with other yes and he was okay. he, and he was what he was doing was keeping people away from the catholic church you know adoption circle mm -hmm. the, the adoption agencies he was kind of going independent because that's at the time he felt like he was like i care about these people individually hmm. we'll see how that played out but never <laughs> nevertheless my mom's twin, who was my actually my godmother, said, "Hey, 
are you in? And they said, yes. So she said, get a crib. And my adoptive parents were in the waiting room as I was coming through the chute. Wow. And my mom's twin, who was a nurse, also knew that it was closed. And she knew that she would, my parents would only get non-identifying information. So when there was a break in the action, <clears throat> she went into their room and stole the names. Ripped a piece of onion skin paper. How 70s is that, by the way? Wrote down their full names, gave it to my mom, and that's and it that that's where it went in the file for God knows how long. And uh, so I went off, and I was, you know, I was I was raised by my parents, and it was good. And then when I was three years old, doctor called again. He goes, "I got you got nine days. You want this kid or no?" And my dad said, "Of course." Another boy, my brother. And there we were for years. And uh, when I turned 11, actually, when I turned seven, I started to get kind of, you know, they say you change every seven years, right? It's like you kind of mm -hmm. go through like a cellular rebirth or whatever. And seven was like a, another number. 14 was certainly another. But um, I started to wonder. I started to think. I started to ask. And just like everyone, they all got the script. I'd love to get the script, by the way, that was given to all of our adoptee parents. Your your biological parents love you so much. They give you a gift. They want to, you know, same thing. And I've always yeah. known I was adopted. That's the other one, right? Um, which but is, they had told you before that? Without a doubt. Without a okay. doubt. Yeah. 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 There, there was no, you know. And I fully looked like my parents like blonde they were like dark hair midweight blue eyes you know um, my brother brian who's three years younger than me super fair skin blonde toehead really good at baseball nothing like me at all so um we went along things were good i started to wonder about things you know that that's how it goes and then i turn 11 and my mom is pregnant and yeah. that was my youngest brother. And did that shift anything in you? Like, did it bother you? Did you have feelings about <clears> it? I always played the role of, like, keep your head down, wear black. Yeah. Stay out of sight. You, you weren't, did you, did you and your adoptive brother, either one of you fall into the stereotypical <laughs> roles of the good adoptee or the rebellious adoptee any of that I stuff? I was definitely the good adoptee and as I'm sitting in my mother's backyard right now I'm still playing the good adoptee <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> but you know um yeah it was a little tougher for my brother for a lot of reasons which are forthcoming um but it was you know I it, it kept me out of sight and that's kind of the way I liked it um weird thing when i was seven i you know raised catholic mm -hmm. and i had this weird pang of guilt when they were explaining the ten commandments mm -hmm. when they talked about adultery and i'm like did i do that like am i oh like this weird stupid guilt that we have that you thought you were the product of adultery yeah. or something no, like that i was the one cheating like i was the one oh. doing something wrong you're hearing Which that message make and sense. a strange thing, yeah. But it's a weird <laughs> thing for a seven-year-old to cry about in yeah. class. Yeah. Yeah. So pack on that trauma and keep going. We say weird, but, you know, honestly, it's it's stuff we don't know how to put into words and all of that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just like you, listening to this and going through all this, it's like you just go back. You're like, what's my problem? Like, oh. And things start to. Yeah. Finding, yeah. you know, what is it, Louise? tracing it backwards or tracing whatever it back yeah mm -hmm. and then at 14 i just became this melancholy kid not the you know a grown adult you see before you know um but like i <clears throat> it's funny uh my mom used to call me eeyore oh. like <laughs> the depressed donkey yeah <laughs> yeah like now i wonder why Ooh, funny. And so, right and i'm they there was really probably no hey we should you know have you talked to somebody or anything yeah like i that. mean it wasn't even on, on the table no. then, I, I guess. think what a what a lot of us are dealing with is people that don't have the tools 
mm-hmm. given them and you know i mean let's be realistic you adopt a puppy you like the puppy when it becomes a dog that giving you problems maybe you're not like digging into being a, as much of a parent anymore as maybe mm-hmm. you were in the beginning yeah <laughs> i said that out loud so um <laughs> So I'm still I'm still reeling from the fact that the doctor brokered this. I, two of them. 22 days and nine yeah. days. Like who's he curious? Ha, has he yeah. is he still amongst us? No. Uh, did he ever have any problems like tr- with <clears throat> the law with any of that? As far as I know, no. There, you know. Uh, I mean, it's traffic game. I mean, that's Without exactly what it is. I know. I was recently had a conversation with my mom. I, I don't know if you guys have seen the show, uh, The Woman in the Wall. No. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I did. Trigger I couldn't. I didn't watch the whole City. thing. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> they literally show a ledger of like how much people were paying for babies in Ireland in the fifties and seventies yeah. and eighties. And... It was rampant. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So at your own peril, please. I, you know, go easy. Um, Got a couple things in my at my own peril to watch now. <laughs> I know. I'm just loading you up with pain. Sorry. <laughs> um. So time went on. Still awesome family. And like my parents, we we had a very pleasant childhood. It was good. My dad is a great guy. He, he, it's like he's gonna parent who's in front of him. You know what I mean? He's uh-huh. just a good, good guy. My mom still the same in, in ways but always like if you ever want to look if you ever want to search if you i will be there with you every step of the way and and i felt that which made it okay for me to like read the non-identifying letter you know that from san mateo county in july of 1975 when i was six months old when adoption went through all these things with her, with uh, her saying that i'm sorry to interrupt with her saying that did she have did you know that they had the names of your parents? Yeah, that's what I was. Just yeah, wondering. we did. Okay. We t- we just said their names all the time. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. She knew, she knew my name. Uh, they named me Benjamin. Oh, hmm. I like that name. And I know a lot of people um, change their names, but like Stephen's better than Benjamin, so I'm just gonna stick with this one. <laughs> and oh. in my opinion, I know you like Benjamin. <laughs> uh, <so. laughs> um, you never know. I could change. So you knew. So they'd say your your mom and, and father's name out loud and things. Mm-hmm. But it was the, so when you started having those questions and you asked, they're like, "Well, here's their name." I mean, was it yeah. that simple? And like, then well, yeah, no. I mean, I I've heard a million of these stories listening to your podcast, and it's like well, there was a lot of people that like they start talking about it, but they don't want to talk about it anymore. Mm-hmm. She's like, whatever you need to know from me. It's like my sister stole the names. Like we're, you know, it's like we're. It's it was it really was an open book. Okay. As far as they knew, right? Um. And so I went off to college. I got the hell out of there. And when I was twenty one, I started getting calls from my parents. And uh, they were saying, your brother's acting weird. Your brother is having problems. Your brother's saying crazy stuff. Your brother this, your brother that. You need to talk to him. And he was 18, 19. And we found out that he was schizophrenic. Hmm. Bipolar. Yeah. Convinced that people could hear his thoughts. Convinced Mm -hmm. that people could. We're talking about him all the time. And the records were sealed. So it's like we had nothing. Yeah. We had to go through therapists and find the right meds. And that does not happen overnight. No. He was playing minor league baseball at the time, the freaking Giants. Like he, he's a really good athlete. So it was just like we had to go through this whole thing. We had nowhere to go. Sorry. And ultimately we got him on meds and ultimately we were able to figure it out but it's like it made me wonder what's waiting for me mm. and why don't i get this information so i kind of hung with it for a little while and then i got engaged and i moved back to the bay area my, my wife's like and then but my brother was still reeling it was off and on he lived with my dad and and by the way it totally broke up my family my parents got divorced they couldn't handle it it just was a a lot 
shit show. Yeah. It's a it's terrible it. disease. It's yeah. terrible. Oh, yeah. And it's like, how do you handle it? I mean, You're actually mourning the loss of your child when the child is still there. Yeah. By the way, NAMI, N-A-M-I, mm-hmm. it, was, it was quintessentially beautiful and it worked well for my mom to go through those just the national it's, it's a national for mental institute you know i'm screwing this up but um she went through national therapy association there. of mental yes thank you and Something, they helped yeah. her in a yeah. major major way to understand that it's not it's, your fault it's not his fault that's just the way that's just what happens and someone has who has mental illness this is how you deal with it and it taught so me a lot your aunt the twin of your mom uh, was not still working with the doctor, so she wasn't able to get the name. No, she moved the... on, and actually, she passed away like 18 years ago. And mm-hmm. what sucks is that this reunion story that I have, I wish she was part of the ride because she would, she would have been very fun to, to tell. But yeah, no, she left that and moved on to move, moved, moved on to something else. Yeah. Um, so then your brother. So now you're like, I need to find out. If I've got any of this stuff, yeah, no, I get engaged. What, what? My fiance is like, mm. you know, like we gotta look into this. And weirdly, you know, I was, I it was my twenty eighth birthday. Um, by the way, like just you know, for for shits and giggles, like you're, and I with a lot of the stories that you that we hear, it's like your frontal lobe doesn't get fully developed till you're twenty seven. Mm-hmm. Just a right, weird right. number, right? Did I do research on this? No, I had someone tell me. <laughs> I, I, te- I teach retirement class and, you know, I, these Stanford types, they're they're real smart. You know why? Because they'll tell you. Um, but if she's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want my kids to see a dime until they're 27. My like, 27, that's a weird number. She's like, that's when your frontal lobe is developed. Yeah. Like I'm a moron, you know? I'm like, well, how do you really know? She's like, I'm a neuroscientist <laughs> at Stanford. I'm like, how do you really know? Right. Anyway. So, 28th birthday at my mom's house. My brother's reeling. My mom's falling apart. And I, I go, can we get the file, the big file, right? So we get the file. And I'm opening it. And I forget about this little shed of paper. And it opens up. And I'm like, hmm. And then I get the non-identifying letter. And, lit- and his name is pretty random. Her name is very common. Type in his name. This 2003 name, email address, education history lines up with everything in the phone number, picture. Now you both, I'm sure, been identified by somebody said you look like blankety blank. Right. I get bratted all the time. It happens. And it's like <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I was going to say wife. Brad Pitt, maybe. <laughs> I didn't want to embarrass you. John Lovitz, <laughs> I've heard that one. I heard Bill Murray. One. That was a good one. Bill Murray. I'm like, stripes Bill Murray or like. Right. It depends on, on the era of Bill Murray. And yeah. this girl's like, she's, she's like, it's a compliment. Just shut up. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I see this picture and I'm like, my fiance, my wife now, she's like, that's you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I shoot off an email doing the typical adoptee. I just want, you know, I'm okay. You're a squirrel trying to give them a nut. You don't want to make any sudden movements. And this is pre cell phone. This is pre, you know, like my, I was working with my dad as an insurance agent and we had no internet at our office. So (laughs) this Um, is what, 2003? 2003. Yeah, exactly. We had a server, I think it was in the break room. Yeah. Yeah. An Earthlink mail. I, I sent it from my SBC Global account. Was, yeah. Yeah. Hotmail, it was already done at that point. I still yeah. have a Hotmail. <laughs> yeah. Scared to lose it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so oh. I sent it that night. I wake up in the morning, nothing. I go to work and I'm just, I can barely pay attention to anything, as you can imagine. Um, I race home and there's an email that's from him. And uh, he's like, Yeah, I held you in my arms the day you were born. Oh. He was there. He's like, there, there was a nurse that was a real B. I'll use, just say B. That's uh, what your aunt? <laughs> Mike Big wow. Blue Eyes. He's like, yeah. He's like, mm, man, she's mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
so um he's like yeah um i was there i've been tracking you down i sat outside your house when you were six weeks old <gasps> looking at you your parents carried you around i was afraid to go in how did he track you down he's just followed my name i don't know i mean it was, I, I don't know he's like i knew you went to school in arizona he's like i was just never ready to reach out to you um wait so he but he knew where your where your parents were and he would he sat outside the house and yeah i've not heard that i no. yeah yeah, yeah. he's totally did he agree that. to the room to to you being relinquished yes he was he was getting he had started his first semester of law school okay and uh he's like i've remarried i broke up with your mother two weeks after you were born and um i don't know where she is um but he was like, sad married, about I'm it in, what, what was that he was sad about it you don't go to follow someone at six weeks old to their house and watch yeah that's yeah he's like it was tough like it was tough it was tough. yeah and uh, he's like, I'm on the East Coast. Uh, I'm married. I've got two kids, sixth and eighth grade. You know, I'm like, I'm not ready to tell them about this yet, which is fair. And um, I don't know where your mom is because two weeks after we broke up, she joined a, he's like, I don't know if you've heard of a cult called the Unification Church, but it's all otherwise known as the Moonies. Mm hmm she was there he goes uh -huh. i over the next year i got letters from her like recruitment letters you know trying to get you to join yeah trying to get him to join, yeah. Him to join yeah yeah and you know and he's like she's lost i don't know where she is she could be dead and he's like i hired a private investigator that's what he said who knows but um at that point, he and I started a relationship. And, oh, he also said, I'm not sure I'm the dad. And I had seen a picture of him. He hadn't seen one of me. I'm like, dude, oh. this is not going to take long. Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> and then it just so happened I was going to be on the East Coast in about four months after that. And he's like, I'm like, you, do you want to meet? He's like, yeah. I go, do you want to do a DNA test? He's like, sure. And it's like 2003. It wasn't, there was no 23. There, there wasn't any of that. But you it's had to like, go to a lab and like. Right. And of yeah. course I never did it. And um, I sat in this restaurant in New York, like waiting for him to walk in and I'm freaking out. And he walks in and he walks right up to me and he goes, excuse my language, but he goes, we don't need a fucking DNA test. <laughs> <laughs> Which was like at that point in my life, like honestly, one of the nicest things I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. So validating, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Just like a weight off, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have lunch and you're staring at his ears and his hands and his neck and his thighs and all this stuff and how much salt he puts on his fries. It's like all the, I mean, you know, if you've done it, it's like you're just going through all of the things. And I, you know, one thing I'd be really, really curious about for adoptees moving forward is what's the fallout after you meet someone in reunion after that first day? Because mm -hmm. I was barely, like, I was catatonic. Like, I couldn't move, you know. Um, yeah, insane. So that was wonderful. He's been part And he of had, had he yet told his other kids? Did he, in that mm -hmm. four-month period, did he tell yeah. them? No. Still hasn't. Still hasn't. Oh, still what? hasn't. Now? Like, and this was, you were 28 at the time? This is, 20, this is 21 years ago. You wow. have these si siblings that don't know all these years. I know. I know. It's. I used to work in a firm that was based out of New York. And so I'd see him like twice a year and he would always see me. And he's been really good to my family, good to my kids. He was helping my daughter help find colleges and all this stuff. But it's like, <clears throat> I don't know. There's just this hump that we haven't been able to get over with that. And I can't push it. I can't. I, I could push it. I pushed it. What once. about his wife? Apparently she knows. And just and that's as far as I've got. But then the lie keeps building and it gets like, then the yeah. kids are like, how long you've known him and not told us. That gets even worse and worse and worse. That's just I know. like we could, we could have had a brother. And, right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, hmm. it'd be even weirder if I followed them both on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> listen i follow my half sister this is a everything. twist i just wasn't accept i, I wasn't even this twist. if i ever meet them they're gonna be like let's follow each other on instagram and he's like steve's been following you since 2009 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i have to come up with a new name 
Yeah, it's but yeah. weird. So, um, but it's like the only time I really pushed it, it was the only time he pushed back. Mm. <sighs> so it's like. Well, Again, you want to keep you. You're wanting to keep that father relationship and bird in the hand. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I, it's like I. It's a uh, tough one, but That's still, tough. it's it, just it, that that yeah, it's it's on your shoulders, you know, like you, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, does one of them live in San Francisco? No, right by you. Yeah. Huh. I've can. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going through the same with with some with some siblings. I need to really get my arms around and reach out to and stuff because it becomes the isn't it sort of their right to know as well and your right and to have mm -hmm. that relationship. Yeah, it's not our job to hold someone else's secret. I I, I completely it's just, agree. It's I, just not you know. Yeah. So there's that. But moving on, twelve years later, I get married. I've got two daughters. They're awesome. Um, he's met them. He's just been a, he's, he's, it's, it's a distant part, but it's a part, it's a part. It's, it, and, and, you know, my wife had thyroid cancer and he had to have thyroid cancer and he gave like severe, like direct advice, which was incredibly helpful. And it's like, it's stuff like that, that I don't want to mess with, but it's like the same, I, I get what you're saying completely. Of course, but it's, it's hard. Yeah, no, hard. I mean, it's, it's tricky. It's complicated. It is. It's super crazy. it's there's no easy answer to any of it oh. yeah so then i don't know where he calls me and he's like hey have you ever done ancestry dna i go no he goes i just did it he goes i'm one of five my youngest sister always had a sneaking suspicion that our dad wasn't her dad so in solidarity i did it with her because you're for siblings you're matched with everybody and her suspicion was right so the dad had passed, but they confronted their eight-year-old mother, and she's like, "Yeah, you got me. I had, it. I had an affair." <laughs> so so he goes, "I see how it works now." He goes, "You'll do it. You'll be connected to me, and anyone that's not connected to you, you know, is a lead." I go, "Okay." Like he's all of a sudden shot out of a cannon on this. I go, okay, great, sure. Spin the thing. I'm at a fifth grade girls catholic school basketball game at eight in the morning in south city st veronica's freezing my ass off boom records come back and by the way like it's, we had never done that dna test so in the back of my mind i'm like oh dude this is gonna suck if i'm not related to him <laughs> right uh, also was he not connecting the dots that maybe his own his other children uh <laughs> that's what i was thinking get on whole... there like <laughs> See, that's why the two of you are playing chess and I'm just playing checkers. So I didn't even think about that one. Um, but up until up until now, no idea. Um, but anyways, I get the thing and and like they don't screw around, right? You know, like he, right. he's your father. I was like, Ooh. and then there's another person that's, you know, first cousin or better, not connected to him, my age, and I screenshot it to him because I don't know what to do now. Sent it to him. He, he's like, you know, I might have mentioned this to you, but um, your mom gave up a kid for adoption before you were born. No. Ah. <clears throat> like, he never Ooh. mentioned this? In his defense, I went back and read the initial email he sent back to me, and he did say that, but I just plowed just, over it because I was, yeah. like, blind by my own, you know, yeah. overwhelmed overwhelmedness that's a word so you were is. the second child she gave up yes and that is my sister who also lives in portland oh. how, she, how my, many years older two two years older yeah i'm crashing her place tonight <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well that's good to hear at least she, nice. yeah no we get along really well it's like we're two peas in a pod in a lot of ways she got she went to a family that was definitely much tougher time than what I dealt with. Um, tough, abusive mom. And then her parents got pregnant when she was like six months old. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Poor thing. Yeah. She would get introduced as this is my adopted daughter. Nice. Oh like my in God. Royal Tenant Moms. Yeah. 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 And we joked about that in our initial call. So I'm like, I knew she was getting. Somebody, but, somebody we interviewed recently said that uh, her, when her parents had their, her the her their biological child, her brother, 
that she knew immediately that they loved that she that yeah. the, her mother loved him more and later in life before she died confronted her she didn't say you loved him more but she said you love him differently and, and the mother agree, like did not deny that i mean maybe for them it's easier to love the mirror yeah by well, the way we didn't... think about it because we've we talk about oh we're just we're placed in a family of strangers, you know, maybe in there, there's a part of them that feels that too. This oh, is, a, yeah. this is a stranger. Oh yeah. Um, no, as, totally. as, as the adoptee grows out of its babyness, you know, and, and everything becomes evident. No longer a puppy. Right. Yeah. Right. No I mean, a puppy. And it's like, that's a good book title. <laughs> right. Yes. But you know, no longer a puppy, but also, you know, throwing another metaphor over like vampires. Mm. you look in the mirror and there's nothing looking at looking back yeah. at you right you and can, another thing you, you know the that. the other complex thing here just in this little thing that we're talking about i'm on a different train already is just that you know you had nice parents good parents i had nice parents a lot of people don't want to speak out because of that but look how many people don't that's oh, yeah. the whole thing we need to be advocates for all adoptees because your sister, who you can literally say went home with a different family, abusive, whole different situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I called her and I met her for the first time, I had still been under the assumption that our mother was dead. Yeah. I go, do you know anything? And like, we're talking and, I'm getting, and we're getting along and it's all well and good. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, does she know anything? <clears throat> I go, do you know anything about her mother? She's like, yeah, no, she lives in, a, she lives in Hawaii. What? Yeah, no, she's got like four kids. She's on Facebook. This is her last name. Four other kids, not you two. Yeah, so no. six, it's like a total of six. I almost did seven. I don't know why we were doing that. But yeah, no, it's like six full. And I'm like, have you reached out to her? And she's like, no, I can't. I, I've been rejected enough. I can't do it. And I'm like, motherfucker, I can. Let's, we're going to do this. So my adoptee sleuth, you know, mm -hmm. came, came on and it was on. And I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to find her. And I just went full fledged. My work production that month was awful and I didn't care. And I just spent a lot of time trying to track her down. The only thing I could find was a, was a white pages number, which was a home number. And even though this is 2017 now, so kind of got nowhere, although I did have, and then I saw her on Facebook and I'm like, oh my God, that's, a, that's her. Like, and it, and it, and it checked out, um, and call, call, call. And it's like, I, when I sent my dad an email, my father, my biological father, an email, like, that's the only thing I knew I had since then prospected. I had done telemarketing, like I had done every, every shitty sales job ever. So it's like I prospected out the ass and out of all. Here's all I wanted. I wanted an immediate yes or an immediate no. Maybe is the worst answer, right? Yeah. Like reject me now. I could, I, I could, I, people send letters and I can't imagine that anxiety of like, hey, I just sent a letter. Waiting. Yeah. Fuck okay, that. No way. So, I'm calling, calling, calling. I'm not getting through. I'm starting to get upset. So it's like I expanded my search. So when you, you know, back in the I'm feeling lucky tab on the Google, um, she showed up in a obituary, not her obituary, but her father's obituary, my grandfather, survived by eight, eight people. And, and it says where everyone lives. And there were three people in California. And I'm like, well, I'm coming after you guys. So I, there was one in Santa Rosa. There was one in Mission Viejo, which is down south. And there was one in Albany, which is not far from where I live. It's East Bay. Calling, 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 calling from different numbers, calling from conference rooms. If, when I had time, like I, I know that I know how to do it. And on Halloween of 2017, her, my aunt picked up the phone. And she's like, I never pick up the phone. I'm sick. I'm just, I go, give me 30 seconds. I go, 
my name is Stephen Rosal. I was born in December. I have a family. I have a house. I don't need anything. I just want to give health history. You know, the whole thing. And then there's silence. She goes, is your middle name Henry? I go, yeah. Because I know who you are. Mm-hmm. She's like, I was there living with your mom when she was born. We've, it's hard to be in fully connect with her because she's still in the church. She was married in 1979 in Madison Square Garden oh, in a big... paired ceremony with 2,000 people. There's a New York Times article. It's yeah. bananas. Still married to the guy. Oh, she, she still is. Oh, yeah. Are they, and they're Goodbye. still in the church? Yes. With the four kids? The kids are all out. Oh, they're all out of the church. Yeah. By the way, we talk about adoptee uh, drama, you know, uh, cult survivor traumas that give us a run for our money. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but we talk and she's very defensive. She's very protective of her sister, which I actually really appreciated. And she's still working. Like, Where do you work? She's like, I worked at 50 California Street in San Francisco. I'm like, I worked across the street from you for six years. Mm. Six that years. Too seems common. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this really attractive lady is slowing down the Starbucks line, you know, in my head. <laughs> anyway, so she's like, you want her cell phone number? I'm like, that's all. That's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. And uh, she goes, you want me to tell her that I'm, that you're calling? I go, no, I've done enough. I was cold calling people with her last name in Kansas city for years. Like I, I don't you care. You really anymore. looked. Yeah. Yeah, like re- just like just reject me, just put me out of my misery, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm not waiting around for a letter, so I call, I call, I call. Then then I call her cell phone, and she's not answering. So I text. I go, my name is my name is Steve I really love to talk to you. And then I see the dots, right? Like first communication, first another. Holy shit! It says, "Who are you, and what do you want from me?" <laughs> I mean, I even I laughed at that point. I was like, "This is just, it's just ludicrous." I'm like, I, although it's like the name doesn't ring a bell, but nevertheless, I said who I was. And she's like, "I'm really glad you reached out. I can't talk right now. Let's talk later." And we spoke that night for two hours, and after that night, I was like, "Cat, I couldn't even move the next two days. I could barely summon." And, and it was it was wonderful. She said a lot of wonderful things. She said, I really wish we could have kept you, but it just wasn't time. We were getting a lot of advice to not. Um, your father was very motivated and all of these things. And, you know, we knew you were going to a good family and yada, yada, yada. And uh, I'm like, so are you still? She's like, yeah, I'm in the church. It's like, I play piano for them every, every week, you know? And uh, we live in one of the houses that's owned by the church. She live in Hawaii? Yeah, she lives in Kona. Mm. Still does. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and had had did her did the four younger children know about you about, about the two adoptions? They did not. So she asked so me. You've got a ton of siblings that didn't know about you then. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I'm yeah, I'm I'm leading the league over here. Yeah. Um and she said, Don't put anything on social media, which I wouldn't have done anyway. No. She said, please don't put anything because I raised them to the church where premarital sex was like so no she go. didn't she hasn't told them either or wait okay she said i'm, I'm going to tell the them she said oh, i'm going okay. to tell them. so i let it go this is like i don't know you know we're, we're, we're now in like november of 2017 and then i wake up one day i take my kids to universal studios and i wake up and i have four invites on facebook all with the same last name i'm like oh, i guess the cat's out of the bag with all my siblings oh so timing is the same such day. A huge deal. Yeah, I, I was like, but timing is such a huge deal. They're in their late twenties, early thirties, like they're able to handle it. So, you know, I don't know. I'm still trying to let my dad off the hook, but you get where I'm going with it. But yeah, I reach out to all of them. They're awesome. Remember, I said my middle name's Henry. One of their names is Henry. <laughs> yeah, and they're great kids i mean they're they've got they were raised in that church one of them in an arranged marriage at some point a question did um did your mom give you any information about 
the doctor and how that all That's, came yeah. about. Like she said she did not like that guy. Uh, baby broker. Yeah. Yeah. And did, also did, I, did they pressure them? Because they were a couple. And I know the dad was going to law school, but he was so sad about it and drove by your house. Was there pressure that maybe wasn't there? They did not mention any kind of pressure. Okay. You know, what they did was it, 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 it's it's funny because they they had both said separately. And these two have not talked since I was born, right? They're just right. and they they both said we were getting pressure from other adoption agencies trying to like hone in mm -hmm. on it. And, yep. God. Yeah, and she liked them even less. So it's like the devil you know, the devil you don't know. One actually really good part where I'm very lucky is that, you know, my adoptive mom, a lot of things, but like she made this whole thing okay. Like she was the biggest fan during reunions. She wanted to hear about everything. Like she's like, just tell like it wasn't about her. It was like, just tell me more. Like I'm so excited. This is so awesome. Like it was. It just made it okay. Not only that, but it's like my wife was super supportive. And my kids were like 11 and 9. So it's like. Fascinating. I just, yeah, no, but I'm like, oh, this is normal. They're like, yeah, it's normal. Dad's got like nine moms, whatever, you know. But it's like, <laughs> I didn't have to be weird about it. And. That's helpful. Oh, it's just, it's huge. It's and huge. I wonder if, you know, you said your mom does have some things all moms do. But maybe because of how she came about having you and. It was very quick for her. I mean, honestly, it was kind of yeah. like an offer from your sister, from her sister. Yeah. And you so, know, she used to work at Kaiser too, and she worked in 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 San Francisco, and she she worked. Her office looked out on this wayward home for Catholic mothers, and she'd she'd mm. see like a gaggle of like nine teenage moms like run down the mountains to get birds. Right. Well, and prior to uh, Roe passing yes. early in the 70s that home would have been you know the girls who went away that's right that's that yeah, era but, the baby scoop and right it, but but even row like the catholics are like because I, well, here's one thing that my biological mother told me she's like you want one ticket out of this family have an abortion mm. yeah. that's it you know so that is wow so one and only um this pump i'll give it to the catholic church and i'm just gonna leave that one right there <laughs> So, uh, and then all that went down. My sister came out and visited. She played her aunt came. And then I went to go see my, 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 my mother in, in March. And that was like very emotional for me. It was very tough. It was very like, I'm flying to Hawaii and I'm just bawling like the whole way. And I'm sitting in this, this like mother and daughter. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what asshole cries on the way to Hawaii? <laughs> you know, and it was just, it was just so overwhelming. It was so much. And not only that, but in the back of my head, I'm like, am I going to get recruited? Right. Oh, like, well. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it was, it was, I didn't yeah, know. I, could, I guess that's a legit thought. Yeah. It was, there was, there was just a little bit of terror involved in there and, and she hadn't, gone through that and luckily i had a buddy of mine from high school that lived on the island as well so i stayed with him and was she very warm and welcoming and oh my god she was awesome still is oh. spoke for two nights ago she's just she, it's like a mom who says nice things about you <laughs> you must watch it. our youtube listeners because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you'll get a little more in there's depth, lots of uh things nuances you'll you're missing if you're just listening <laughs> i'm gonna go to youtube exactly. yeah exactly but no wow she, so it, this all sounds really positive so, and yeah reunion wise like great like i've been to two family reunions already one was in and my mother and biological mother have met well they have i was wondering yeah. about that yeah, uh, it, was it, that... it just weirdly happened, and it just happened to be that she was in town, and we're up here. It actually happened in this house, and it was awkward, awkward as hell. They were I can both, imagine. Neither one of them knew how to act, and it's okay. Um, yeah. And then again, they both started saying nice things about me, and <laughs> I felt there's the no, most uncomfortable. There's no rule book for that, right? It's, it's yeah. not even close. Yeah, no. Um. um one of my 
did your are your parents your your birth mother and your father do they both know that you're in touch with each other like they all they know okay yeah i mean he he brokered me finding her right and i was i was telling him every step of the way and what what was funny is when when i found her after i after i met her his first his first question was she asked about me (laughs) (laughs) it reminds me of uh am's you know in the mistress's daughter with norman yeah yeah. yes um, and I was like, no, <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> no, she's yeah, long no. moved on, friend. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, long moved on from a lot of things, but Stephen, yeah. here, do the siblings are they in touch with your mom? Like, you have a good relationship. Oh with yeah, them. yeah. What no, happened they, with your sister? And did she met her. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. By the way, our first phone call, I'm like, I'm telling her about me and telling her about my life, and like, I forgot. I'm like, oh yeah, no, I found Elizabeth too. She's oh. like, so the four, the other four are, they still talk to her. They're just not part of the church anymore. Yes. Yes. Okay. There's, there's, yeah. there's issue with that. And, you know, but they're not a strain. They, they keep up with her. They do. They do. I mean, it's tough and they right. have a lot of anger and they have a lot of things to work right, because through. Because of the cult stuff. Yeah. Yes. But I'm, I'm, I'm friends with all of them and it's, and it's like one, two of them in Hawaii, one's in Texas. Like they're all over the place and we're all, all over the place, but um, yeah, it's, it's. And, and your sister that you're staying with tomorrow night, that's um, had the not so great adoption. Mm-hmm. Does she have any resentment towards, I mean, it's her story, but is she, you know, is she okay? She's she's okay. She's gotten a lot better, you know. Hey, send she, her it, send her to li- have her listen to the podcast. Trust me, her podcast will be way more entertaining than mine, without a doubt. No, I mean, to, does she listen? Because it could be helpful. It's I'm I'm, I'm, I'm inching my way forward. Okay, you it's know what? Well, we won't record yeah. this part. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know what I mean? I mean, we'll we'll she, take that out. No, I mean we we can stop talking about I, it. I appreciate that, but yeah, no, I mean it's we'll get there. I'm, I I gotta go, I gotta move slow on that one. Yeah. Um. Everyone has their thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I'm incredibly lucky to, and it's like my wife has met my biological mother, and it's like the moment my wife saw her, she burst into tears. Oh. Yeah. Because it's like. You go through this so much and you hear so much and it's like you support and go through all that and you're like, holy, this person's real, you know? Yeah. That's a... Well, this has been a really great, I loved hearing your story. Lots of, lots of things I wasn't expecting. So. Me too. Yeah. It's complicated. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and the complications continue, but um, for the most part, yeah, no. Well, as we, you know, reunion is really not mm-hmm. the end. It's the beginning, right? Sure. So. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, yeah. No, I mean, um, I'm lucky, and yeah, I'm. Gonna, and they're all going to be in Kansas City. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and telling your story. We just met you, and here you are. So, thank Man. you. Wow, thank you so much. No, I'm I'm honored to just even talk to you guys and be a part of this, and uh, I hope the story helps and. You know, I, one other thing I just want to add is that, like, my by my my adopted dad asked me, and he he my my, mom, my mom's really cool, but after all this reunion happened, he got he got kind of he got a little bajiggity, you know. He just got kind of worried, and he said to me, "I'm kind of worried that you're gonna move on," you know. And I'm like, first of all, Dad, I'm 45, so you know. But I thought what I said was really good. I said. I don't call him dad. I don't call her mom. Your dad. She's mom is mom. Like that title is earned. And I think that's a good script. If you're going to deal with your adoptive parents. It's mo- it's crazy hard for, in the, yeah. and... it, the thing that they have is they lost uh, your other brother too. They've had a lot of stuff, but you, you know, it's not, it's mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, <laughs> And the ways you're reading, reading each other's minds. Just it's, it, it, I don't know what to say about that. No, uh, I know I, I I thousand percent understand what you're saying, and you're you are also extremely correct, and it's, yeah, uh, um, yeah, complicated for everybody, but it, it, but 
the adoptee seems to always be the one uh, keeping oh, the plates my. in the air, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I have to watch out for your feelings. Oh, gosh, I got to watch out for your feelings. Let me, how do I manage this all? So what do you think I'm doing right after this? Yeah. And it's hard. It's very, I understand. It's really, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a difficult, tricky thing. So. Yeah, I'm literally officiating a wedding for my non-biological brother. You know, my brother and I used to make fun of him for not being adopted. Yeah. <laughs> like we'd go to Thanksgiving. We're like, you're related to these psychopaths. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, like, I'd rather not know. <laughs> uh well, thank you, Stephen. So thank you. Appreciate I know I keep going. On. Sorry. No, we love this. Thank you very much. All right. We'll see you soon on Patreon too. Absolutely. Thanks. Mm -hmm.